how's it going? Welcome back to some more Football Manager 2024 and another part of the Everton Project. We are here at the start of Season 2. It starts right now and this is a perfect place for you to hop onto the series if you haven't caught it already. I'm Joe, if you are new around here. And this is my Everton save where, of course, we are taking a trip down Nostalgia Lane. Um, I... Did the FM uh, 16 Everton project uh, back in the day. It was a very successful series. We won the Champions League with Everton. We won the Premier League with Everton as well. And uh, I thought for this year, since Everton are in a little bit of trouble in real life, I thought I would bring it back. Um, and we had a successful first season, actually, finishing in eighth place, which was a lot higher than I ever expected. We didn't actually get any European football with that. I was expecting uh, some Conference League football, but that didn't happen. Uh, but we did have a very good summer. And yesterday we had our first proper transfer special of the series. And, uh, well, I, I think we had a very good time of it. Uh, if if I do say so myself. So let's uh, go back all the way to the start of the summer. Our first summer signing was uh, David Martinez. That one was uh, rounded up in January. We've brought him in for £275,000. He's worth £34 million already. He is an 18-year-old Venezuelan international, two-star current ability, five-star potential I think he is going to be an amazing signing. We then signed uh, Emil Smith Rowe for £31 million, 24 year old Englishman. Uh, he's coming from Arsenal, can play on either wing, can play behind the striker and in the midfield as well. So he's an all round, very, very good player to be using um, in this position, I think possibly might move him back into the, the central midfield regions when we've got a few players back. Uh, Brian Zaragoza has come in as well. £12 million, 23-year-old Spanish player. Uh, he's got 16 dribbling, 16 acceleration, 14 pace, 16 flair. Very, very good winger, in my opinion, uh, by the looks of it. Did OK in La Liga last year. Four goals and three assists uh, and a 7.03 average rating for Granada, who aren't exactly uh, one of the big teams in that division. Uh, on the outs uh, towards the end of last season, we got rid of uh, Jesse Lingard. He went to Luton Town uh, on an initial loan, but that will be made permanent next year. Mason Holgate has gone out on loan to Middlesbrough. And Michael Keane has joined Leicester City for £6.25 million. Uh, into the 2024 um or July the 1st, 2024. After that, uh, Tyrone Mings has joined us on a free transfer. 31 years old now, but still got some really good attributes. Three and a half star ability, still worth uh, about £20 million. I think that could be a genius signing. Uh, Anthony Martial has also joined on a free transfer. One that I was a little bit sceptical about, but actually scored 13 goals in the Premier League last season, was leading the line for much of Man United's uh, year. And I think, you know, given the right service, can stick the ball into the back of the net. Certainly a very good backup option. This one I'm really, really excited about. Rudy Bargy has come in from Copenhagen. Uh, he is our first wonder kid of the series. Only cost £9 million. He looks incredible some awesome uh, attributes already he's only 18 years old he's already worth between 62 and 90 million pounds he's had an awesome pre-season five goals and three assists and a 7.88 average rating he could be really really special uh, we then signed Josip Stanisic, 24-year-old German, inter, uh, sorry, Croatian international. Um, uh, the way, way I'm getting Germany from is we signed him from Bayern Munich and uh, he played last season out on loan at Leverkusen. Did okay, comes in as a bit of a backup option at right back and at centre back. Uh, we've also signed Ruben Sanchez from Espanyol. 
Uh, again, 4.6 million, not a lot of money. Three star ability, just a little bit of depth on that right hand side. Looks good, and I think we'll uh, slot into our side very well. And then most recently, we signed Harvey Barnes on loan until the end of the year. We do have an option of signing him for £30 million at any point during the season. Had a decent season at Newcastle last year, um, but comes in as a bit of a fringe option for us this year. Yeah. Uh, some other players to leave the club. Uh, Neil Morpé has gone to Montpellier for £7 million. I think we've absolutely robbed them blind there. Um, he is... Uh, 27 years old, didn't really play too much in the Premier League last season, but getting £7 million for him, I'm very, very happy with that. Hopefully, it will all come good. So, what do the media think of our signings? Well, they think that we are going to finish 11th in the league this year. Um, yeah, you know, I think that would be all right. We're, we're expected to finish mid-table anyway. Um, I'm not expecting to quite hit the heights of last season. Uh, Man City are favourites for the Premier League. Newcastle um, are expected to finish up to fifth. Going down, apparently, are Leicester, Bournemouth and Luton Town, who dramatically stayed up after a fabulous run of form under Andrei Shevchenko at the end of last season. If you're interested, who's taken over Man United? Zinedine Zidane and Newcastle have got Julian Nagelsmann, uh, who has taken over the position. Let's have a little look at manager movement uh, overall in the series so far. Uh, so Gary O'Neill was sacked early on. Petrovic uh, went there. Paul Heckenbottom got replaced by Ralph Hassenhutl. Uh, Sean Dyche went to Crystal Palace. Nigel Pearson replaced David Moyes at West Ham. Andre Shevchenko replaced Rob Edwards at Luton Town. Okay, let's have a look at the Dream 11 then for the Premier League. It's looking like uh, a very Man United, Liverpool, Man City. Uh, a couple of Arsenal players in there as well, um, to, for good measure. Uh, interesting to look at some of the key players in there. Our two key players are apparently Beto and Emil Smith Rowe. So let's have a little look at the tactical direction we are going to take today. And I might change my mind right now, actually. Um, I think Anana is going to come out of it. We're going to put James Garner there. We're going to put Smith Rowe in the middle because I think that's going to suit him perfectly, actually. And we're going to put Harvey Barnes on the left-hand side. So he's just come in, but I think he can do a good job on that left-hand side as a bit of an inverted winger because um, he's right-footed. He can cut inside and uh, hopefully produce some magic. So this is going to be our team to face Chelsea in the first match of the season. We have got uh, Meslier starting in goal following an injury to Jordan Pickford. Patterson, uh, Mings, Maguire and Branthwaite in defence. Garner holds the midfield with McGinn and Smithrow in the middle of the park. Bargy and uh, Barnes will start left and right of Anthony Martial up top. So let me know down in the comments section now. Who do you think is our best summer signing? Who do you think is our worst summer signing? And where do you think we are going to finish in the league this year? As I say, expectation-wise, um, it's not that high on us. Uh, Mid-table from the board in the Premier League, they just want us to be competitive in the Cup. So essentially just turn up is, is what they're saying. Um, we should finish mid-table mid at the very least because I think... I think we've got a side that is is good enough to compete this year. Um, I think we've improved on last year's team. We've got less loan signings. We've got younger personalities in the squad. I really do think it could be a very special season if it comes off. Now, against Chelsea, of course, Chelsea have, have got a very strong lineup. They've got Romelu Lukaku uh, back in their side because apparently nobody wants to buy him permanently. And he's going to be a real handful for Chelsea this year. Um, but hopefully we can continue our good form from the end of last season. Of course, we had a decent run of form that almost got us into the top six at the end of last year. We did just have a, a couple of niggly results towards the end of the year. You know, a couple of draws in there and a defeat to Luton. But if we can start off this season as well as we did last year, I think we've got the potential to keep that going a lot better this year because our depth options, although our squad isn't as big, I think 
our, our bench is a hell of a lot stronger than it was last year and and that's the makings i would say of a of a real competitive force ah so there you go that's why that wasn't um working before but there you go we've uh, enhanced the tablet open and uh, hopefully we will get to see some chances today i was expecting to see a fair few goals actually against uh, chelsea um because you know they're not uh, they're not the best team themselves although they had a good season last year i think they finished in the top 4 i think they finished fourth in the end um so you know certainly compared to real life they're they're a lot better but um we will we will see how we get on it feels like this is going to lead to a mistake is there going to be an early goal for the Everton here. Here's Kai Sado. He whips it wide towards uh, Raheem Sterling now to um, De Sassi. Now to Sterling again. Here's uh, Enzo on the ball. Whips it forward to Romelu Lukaku. What a save from Meslier there. Jordan Pickford injured. This is his chance to really solidify that number one position. He ended last year as our number one. Can he start this year? In the same fashion, oh, it was almost off the line. But Romelu Lukaku does put it into the back of the net. And I talked about him before this match. He is going to be a cheat code this season. He's going to end up scoring 30-odd goals for Chelsea, getting them easily into the top four. That's my prediction anyway. Um, header there. And, well, Lukaku was ready. It was so close to being off the line. But Chelsea take the lead here. Uh, in less than half an hour of this match. And it was that man, Romelu Lukaku, who gets us off and running. Okay, right. Uh, heading up to half time then. Are we going to be able to get back into this? We're certainly not looking very threatening at the moment, which is is a bit of a shame. You know, we, we had some attacking prowess last season. We were the seventh top scorers in the league and Beto was... Uh, the second top scorer in the league. He's got an injury for a couple of months. There's Martial and he scores. New signing. Puts it into the back of the net just on the stroke of half time. And I tell you what, Martial, if he can get into a good run of form, it's going to be difficult for Beto and Calvert-Lewin to get back in after their injuries. Um, especially if all he needs is one chance to whack it into the back of the net. Good assist from John McGinn. And at half time, it's one all. That has given us a bit of impetus going into... Uh, the, the second half let's uh, say we're proud of them so far let's give them a little bit of faith they love a bit of george michael in the dressing room at half time um <laughs> so hopefully they listen to big george and uh and perform for him in the second half here's reese james with the throw what's he gonna do he gets it to sterling it's still reese james what's he gonna do with it now he's still going is reese james and he shoots it's over the bar I was thinking, is he lost? <laughs> but no, he, he managed to get the shot off. Um, Harry Maguire has taken over the captaincy this season. Uh, really happy for, for him that he's had a, a good run of uh, form for us since uh, joining in January and hopefully revolutionised his career. What a ball from Emil Smith-Rowe. Here's uh, Rooney Bargey. Gets it back towards Patterson. It's John McGinn hits the post. Oh, that was so close, and it's cleared for a corner. Uh, Harvey Barnes has picked up a knock, so we will be bringing him off in a second. But we want to see the conclusion of this highlight. Garner whips it in. It's a header from Branthwaite, but uh, actually it went straight to Lukaku. So, who are we going to bring on? I think Brian Zaragoza deserves a bit of a chance. Um, I was talking him up in the, in the build-up to this match uh, Smith Rowe not having a great game but did just put in a, a fabulous ball Rooney Bargey not doing that great either obviously in his very first uh, Premier League match uh, James Tarkovsky is going to come on for Tyrone Mings who's had a solid debut but other than that I think we're okay let's uh, let's just push forward Have we got any... Yeah, we have got instructions on it. It looked like on our tactical screen that maybe we didn't. But we're encouraging the boys. 
we've certainly been a, a better side in this second half compared to Chelsea. I mean, you look at the match momentum, we're definitely the better side at the moment. Let's hopefully keep that going. I'm going to encourage them. We're actually going to go attacking for the last 10 minutes. Let's see if we can take a couple more risks. Who's gone injury? I think it was Branthwaite, wasn't it? So uh, we're going to bring on Stanisic. Um, hmm. What can we do here? You see, none of these uh, are particularly exciting. I'm going to actually put Ruben Sanchez on at right back as well. We're going to change the wing backs up. See if they can add a little bit to us. I mean, we'd certainly take a 1-1 draw against Chelsea on the first day of the season. Seven minutes of added time. Will we get a late winner here? It doesn't look like it. I think that's going to be that for our first match of the season. one all. We will take it. Um, we didn't quite turn up the way that we uh, we want to, to turn up. By the way, look at that Wolves match. Wolves, of course, beat us... 6-5 I think last season they've just lost 7-3 to Arsenal at home, who's this guy? Victor Osserman uh, I think he's yeah, 86 million he scored 4 in his first game this guy looks uh, pretty tasty doesn't he? oh my god look at his head in. he's a beast, how tall is this guy? where's his height? I can never find the guy's height on here ah, here, 185, so he is tall, he's a tall lad He's got awesome uh, heading. I'm assuming his yeah, jump and reach has got... Oh, my God! 19 pace! This guy is a beast! Where have they washed him up from? Four goals in his first match. That's pretty scary. Um, wow. <laughs> I did not expect to see those sorts of numbers. Um, Harvey Barnes picked up a bruised knee, which is a bit of a shame. Um, and the Premier League kicks off. So I'll be back in nine days' time when we take on Leicester. Newly promoted Leicester. And I would suggest a very dangerous Leicester side. OK, just uh, the one change for the match against Leicester City then. We've brought in Brian Zaragoza uh, on the left-hand side as Harvey Barnes is still recovering from a little bit of a knock last time. But everything else stays the same. Uh, Dwight McNeil is under transfer bid from a couple of teams for a, a loan, uh, including Leicester. Um, with a view to making that permanent, he's complained that he should be starting more games, but... My argument is you should have played better last season, mate. But uh, hopefully, hopefully we get some money for him anyway and uh, we're able to maybe bring in an, another couple of players uh, with that money. That's the plan anyway. Uh, if we can get him off the wage bill, that's, that's good as well. So we shall see. We shall see if it works out. But we are taking on Leicester at the King Power today. Let's see if we can... Get on top of them. It would be very, very nice if we can um, kickstart our season here with a, a strong performance away to a, I would imagine, um, reasonably strong Leicester side. You know, they've just come up from the championship. They've got a bit of momentum behind them and they already had a, a Premier League level squad anyway. Should never have got relegated. Um, and there's Ian Acho, who absolutely tore up the championship last season and hopefully he won't be too confident in and around our penalty area today but um we shall see uh oh what a shot that was from mccaltia or mcatia is it great save from mesley and nonetheless mcatia now whips it in oh it's headed away just about that's okay here's uh, martial who loses it that wasn't good We'll try and encourage them a little bit more here. Come on. We've not uh, not had the best of starts. Not the most attacking flow that I was expecting. I was expecting to be flowy. <laughs> but uh, alas, we are not. Okay, 38 minutes gone. And... Yeah, not, not much has happened other than that free kick from Leicester earlier on. Here's uh, Hermansen. Gets it to face. Now to Ndidi. 
Ricardo, Ma- Mavidi. And it's still going. Oh, John McGinn tried to get it back. It's 1-0. Ricardo Pereira gets there. That was sloppy. That was really sloppy. And this is not the start we had in mind to this season. I was really positive before this episode started. Now I'm starting to panic a little bit, thinking, do we need to make some more signings? But the problem is we don't have a, a load of money to do that. Rooney Bargy not doing anything so far. Emile Smith-Rowe not doing anything. Zaragoza not doing anything. And Martial, well, he had a, a good moment against Chelsea, but hasn't done a lot since. So we're going to have to make some changes here. Uh, Bargy's going to come off. We're going to put... We're going to actually move Smith-Rowe into a more familiar position. We're going to put Barnes on the left. Um... Going to bring a Nana on as well. And sort of swap them two round. And Martial is going to come off for um, Marcus Leonardo. Who has just come back from the Olympics. And hopefully we can start to see a little bit of a turnaround here. Here's a, a corner kick. It's going to be James Garner getting into the middle. We've got some big centre-backs in there. And it's Maguire with the header against his former club. Couldn't keep it down though. And we've got 20 minutes to go. <laughs> Disappointing start to season two. Here's Hermanson. Gets it to Cody. Now here's uh, Feiss. Oh, and it's Leonardo. What's he doing? That could have been his moment. His moment to go and win himself a start in the next match. But he didn't. Here's Smith Rowe. Much better. On the wing here, Smith Rowe finds Leonardo with the shot. What a goal from Marcus Leonardo. And that is what we've been waiting six months for. Obviously brought him in in January, came on as a bit of a bit part player last season as Beto was tearing up the league. Well, there's no Beto in sight. And, well, first time finish right into the top corner. What a brilliant first goal of the season for him. And he's earned himself a little run in the side with that goal. And Emile Smith-Rowe looking a lot better from that position. Garner finds Leonardo, finds an honour. That should have been the moment. That was beautifully worked. And we're looking so much stronger in these last few minutes. Can we find a winner in these four added minutes after the 90? No, we can't. But it's an unbeaten start of the season. We've got to have our positives there. I think after the changes, we looked a lot better aside. So I think maybe the balance of the side isn't quite there at the moment. Maybe Smith Rowe does need to be on a wing um, and uh, we need to be playing Anana and uh, Garner in the middle of the park. But uh, Marcus Leonardo, what a fabulous goal that is. We're going to put our arm around him and say, very well played, sir, because he's been playing at the Olympics. Didn't actually seem to play any matches there, did he? Which is rather odd. Let's have a look at his form. Surely he did. No? Did, can we? Can we look? Yeah, Brazil under-23s. Oh, he did. He did play for the under-23s. Didn't score too many goals, but, but did score a few. Um, what were they playing in? Oh, were they playing in the Coppas? No, no. How, what? How, how do you do this? Can we not filter it to what matches they played? Under-23 squad. There you go, Olympics. Who won the Olympics? France. Even though they uh, 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 they were the hosts. Brazil there. Yeah, so there's uh, Leonardo's team. Can we find any Leonardo goals in there? Certainly not in the, the latter stages. What about in the, the groups? Anything there? No. He is Brazilian, isn't he? Yes, there he is, Marcus Leonardo. So he scored against the Saudi Arabia under-23s. But what a goal. Hey, it doesn't matter. 
Um, let's have a look at when we're going to come back. Uh, we might just play the couple of matches uh, between West Ham and Wolves and come back for the Newcastle and Brentford games next time out just to, to have a little early season check-in. And then we'll move on probably to the, the Merseyside derby in Leeds. So those, those are going to be some fun matches, Man City. Aston Villa, you know, it's uh, it's working out quite nicely. Then United and Brighton, Liverpool and Tottenham. It's all looking good for the schedule, isn't it? But if you have enjoyed this first part of Season 2, give it a massive thumbs up down below. Subscribe for daily Football Manager videos. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.